What was a well-kept secret then was that Kenya was facing imminent crisis of sorts in 1968. The crisis hung like colossus. It all revolved around Jomo Kenyatta's health condition. At the end of April 1968, Kenyatta suffered a stroke, prompting funeral arrangements. The crisis came about because Kenyatta had had not planned for succession and had only ruled for four years. A year earlier, in 1967, Daniel Arap Moy was appointed the vice president, preceding Joseph Murumbi. The heart attack occurred at Kenyatta's Bamburi home in Mombasa. The president was in coma for three days. Kenyatta had traveled to Mombasa for his routine busy working holiday. It was observed that Jomo Kenyatta had failed to address the Labor Day rally on May 1st in a function where he was due to arrive at 10 a.m. Instead, Dr. Njoroge Mungai then the Minister for Defense and Kenyatta's personal doctor appeared at the stadium with the president's speech. It was noted that when he came out of the coma, Kenyatta was seated on a chair in State House, while members who had visited him, who included Charles Njonjo together with Judge Justice Farrell, were standing. Sir John Ainley had retired as Chief Justice, and his place was taken over by Justice Dennis Farrell. There were attempts to guard the state of affairs. There were rumors circulating in Mombasa that medical equipment had been rushed to the residence of a certain high-powered person. George Githi, who was formerly private secretary to Kenyatta and was now the editor-in-chief of the nation, traveled to Mombasa together with David Carlsberg who was sub-editor of The Nation, and Philip Cheng, in order to work on a 16-page supplement on the death of the president. However, it was not until 1978 that the story was used when he passed on. On May 7, 1968, Dr. Njoroge Mungai broke silence to admit that the president had suffered from a fever. A former central bank governor, Duncan Degwa, who was one of the first people to visit Kenyatta, had confirmed in his memoirs that Kenyatta had been in a coma. Asked by Duncan Ndegwa as to what had happened, he simply replied that he had visited an expansive plane. Meanwhile, the Western media reported widely that Kenyatta had suffered a heart attack and others talked about coronary thrombosis. As Ali as 1962, it was noted that during the April 1962 Lancaster Conference, Kenyatta did suffer from nervous exhaustion. In fact, that was the last time that Kenyatta boarded a plane. In 1966, Jomo Kenyatta emerged from a week-long break with a slight limping. Even the state of affairs, during the month of June 1968, the British High Commissioner was approached by Bruce Mackenzie to discuss arrangements for Kenyatta's funeral. This was, of course, after very high-level consultations, which involved Vice President Daniel Moy, Dr. Njoroge Mungai, the Minister for Defense, and Charles Njonjo, the Attorney General. Bruce Mackenzie was the only European to be given a ministerial position at independence as the head of agriculture ministry. Mackenzie's meeting with the Kenyan leadership took place on June 19, 1968. Mackenzie was considered a key partner of the British and a very influential figure. He had previously served in the British Air Force, where he held the rank of a colonel during the Second World War, and had won very many battle honours before coming to Kenya in 1946. Mackenzie's meeting with the British High Commissioner also involved the first secretary and the councillor of the British High Commission. The critical issues that were discussed involved the timing, the location of the funeral, the coffin, transport, 
and lying in state, guests and the barrio. What was critical here was planning of a first-class state federal. All arrangement was shrouded in secrecy. Of importance was how to manage Kenyatta's succession. Arrangements were made to bring unity among the ruling elite. The British government, on request, provided details of previous state funerals of British leaders. These were provided from the office of Lord Chamberlain. The use of specialized language and practice was considered. Among issues considered were the provision of a gun carriageway for the president, given that Kenya did not have one. The funeral was planned to take place at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church on the sixth day. The meeting also considered the possibility of flying morticians at the time of death. The Commonwealth Office suggested the firm of H. Kenyon for the coffin and the embalmer. The firm had been involved in many royal funerals that embalmed King George VI and Churchill. Mackenzie was introduced to John Kenyon, Lieutenant Colonel Johnson of the Lord Chamberlain's office, and Newis from the Ministry of Public Buildings and Works. Britain, who was involved in the 1968 planning, was Colonel Anderson, Chief of Defense Staff of the Kenya Army and the highest ranking British serviceman in Kenya at that time. Anderson wrote to Kenyon in October 1968 with the specific specifications of the coffin. The coffin would be made of meru oak of the Aston design and should have silver oxidized handles and embellishment and be zinc lined. A vault and death mask of the president was requested. Kenyatta's coffin was thus prepared in Britain. It was further suggested that an embalmer together with the director, mask maker and a trainer of Barry Party would be flown to Kenya in case of death, list of planned schedules was provided at the ready. Despite the health setback, Jomo Kenyatta continued to work on schedules in Kenya and East Africa. In 1969, he traveled to Uganda twice, firstly to meet with Dr. Obote over the expulsions of Kenyans in Uganda, Secondly, he attended the December 1969 uh, meeting in Uganda together with the President Nyerere of Tanzania, Kenneth Kaunda of Zambia, uh, Milton Obote of Uganda, at the launching of the Uganda People's Congress Party Manifesto and the Common Man's Charter. In 1970, he participated in the inauguration of Makerere as a university and the installation of Dr. Milton Obote as the Chancellor. Jomo Kenyatta continued to rule Kenya for another 10 years, from 1968 to 1978. Bruce Mackenzie did not live to see the implementation of his plans. He was assassinated through a bomb being placed on his plane by the Amin's agents while the plane was parked at Entebbe Airport where he had gone to meet with Idi Amin. Died two months before Jomo Kenyatta's death in August 1978. Amin had never forgiven him in his role um, in the Entebbe attack, which involved the freeing of hostages by Israeli commandos. George Gizhi, who was uh, the editor in charge of the Daily Nation, was relieved of his post for his part in spreading information about Kenyatta's death. In this episode, it is important to note that the phrase used by Kenyatta when he came from coma has never been carefully analyzed. He had stated that he had visited an expansive plain. Is it possible that Njoroge Mungai, who was defense minister then, and Kenyatta's personal doctor could have explained Kenyatta's link with eternity. Again, what was the experience of Kenyatta family members 
during that difficult time. Another very important point was that the funeral of Jomo Kenyatta was planned to take place at St. Andrew's Church opposite the Central Park on the sixth day after death. Kenyatta's interaction with the Presbyterian Church stemmed from his interaction with them at Dogoto. It was in Dogoto that he met with Canon Musa Gitau, who advised him to go to school. It was in Dogoto that he studied carpentry. Musa Gitau was the father of Mrs. Matiba. Despite this, the funeral arrangements had incorporated many religious faiths. It should be noted that the blueprint that was prepared in 1968 for the funeral would later be used during Kenyatta's funeral in August 1978 and also for the funeral of Daniel Arab Moy and Moy Kibaki with some amendments, of course. The shaft for Kenyatta's funeral that had been developed in Britain in 1968 had been transferred to Kahawa Barracks and later used uh, during his funeral in August 1978. I do hope that this episode would give you a glimpse of the going on in government at that particular time. Kindly support this channel by subscribing, commenting, and giving a like. Thank you.